Hey there everybody, this is Matt of Cigar Hound Dog with another cigar review. And tonight I'll be smoking the Freud Cigar Company's limited edition Sigmund Chapter 1, The Disruptor. This here is a 7.5 by 50 ring gauge double Corona. Barely fits in the frame. Could be a long night tonight. It is currently 8.53 p.m. We'll see how long I'm out here for. But yeah, I can't show the wrapper because of these gigantic bands. Well, this band anyways. Not a fan of gigantic bands, but at least they made this one pretty. We have Sigmund Freud in the background. I'll show you the foot wand down here. Nicely packed. And there are the primary and secondary bands. Love the shade of blue they use. And there's a cap. I'll show you the rest of the wrapper later. But yeah, as far as the blend goes with this cigar, the blend on this cigar is undisclosed. But I do know there are seven different types of tobacco in here. And yeah, Freud, thank you. Thank you, Freud, because Freud sent me out an entire box. This is a $42 cigar. So big thank you, Freud. Means a lot. Also, the box on this is freaking gorgeous. I did a short on it. Check that out if you want. But yeah, a $42 cigar, but I'm still gonna call a spade a spade. Just because they gifted this cigar to me, a box of these cigars to me, doesn't mean I'm gonna give it a high score. If I think uh, $42 is egregious for this cigar, I'm gonna let you know. But yeah, as far as my previous experience with Freud Cigar Company, great. Uh, so far, I've had the Agape and the Alter Ego. The Agape was one of my cigars of the year for 2022. Freaking phenomenal smoke. And then I had the Alter Ego. Not the biggest fan of the band on that cigar, for obvious reasons, if you've seen that cigar. But the cigar itself is fantastic. Great freaking smoke. And both of those cigars have scored memorables. Great experience so far. So yeah, because of that, I'm looking forward to this one. Let's get it cut up, lit up, and see what we have. Where the heck? There it is. Oh, wait up. Let me show the, the wrapper on this first. That foot band, body band slid off very easily. And there's the wrapper. Nice milk chocolate in color. Got one prominent vein there. Another there. But that's okay. Alrighty, let's cut this one up. See how the draw is on this double Corona. Great draw. Now, let's light it up. Very smooth operator to start. Brown sugar, that's the main tone to the retro hill. Always love it when I get that flavor. Brown sugar is the main tone to the retro hill, but this musty oak note is the main tone of the palate. and it's flip-flop for the undertones. So we have musty oak as an undertone through the retro hail and brown sugar as an undertone on the palate. Also getting faint white pepper cinnamon spice combination through the retro hail. Hints of walnut through the retro palate. That is it as far as the flavors go. Right now I'll say mild to medium body, fairly short finish and a smooth smoke texture. Got a lot of cigar to go here, so I'll smoke it down through the end of the first third. We'll see where that ends up being. Let you know how it goes. Hey, we have reached the end of the first third. Beautiful burn line, nice enough looking ash, and still a lot of smoke here. All right, so at this point, medium body, long finish, and now a chewy smoke texture. The smoke texture is chewy because I'm getting a very bready component now. Sweet molasses bread, that is the main tone, both of the retro and palate. Freaking love that flavor. Mmm. Musty oak as an undertone, both of the retro and palate. Still have a touch of white pepper cinnamon spice combination to the retro hill. A 
walnut along with medium roast coffee now through the right on palate. I'm digging this cigar a lot so far. It's long, but damn, I don't mind that right now. So I'll smoke it down through the end of the second third, up to that secondary band. Let you know how it goes. Hey, we are at the end of the second third here. Burn line is a tad wavy, ash kind of flaky, but that's okay. It's been performing very well for a double Corona and still a lot of smoke. All right, at this point, medium plus body, long finish and still a chewy smoke texture. Sweet molasses bread. That is still the main tone, both of the right on palate. But right underneath that though, I'm getting caramel sweetness, not a bad addition to the profile. Getting that note right underneath the sweet molasses bread, both of the right on palate as well. Hmm. Yeah, baby. Through the Ratchel Hill, white pepper, cinnamon, spice combination, still not stinging my sinus. Getting musty oak, also walnut through the Ratchel palate. And hints of medium roast coffee through the Ratchel palate. Typically, I'm not a fan of cigars this big that take this long to smoke, but because it is so damn enjoyable, I don't mind it whatsoever. So I'll smoke it down through the end of the final third here with high hopes as well. And I'll get you the final verdicts. Hey, we have reached the end of the final third. Burn line is a tad wavy. Ash it just before this take, but for a double Corona, the construction has been admirable. And still, a lot of smoke here. So yeah, at this point, medium plus body, long finish, and such a syrupy smoke texture. The sweet molasses bread is gone, but that's okay because the caramel sweetness along with this brown sugar sweetness, those are the two main tones now through the Ratch on palate. Mm. Getting more of the walnut note too, both of the Ratch on palate. This is such a decadent and sweet cigar. White pepper, cinnamon, spice still through the Ratch Hill, still not stinging my sinus, which I prefer. and hints of musty oak and medium roast coffee, both of the Retro Hail and of the Palette. So yeah, overall, I'm gonna rate this cigar a memorable, fantastic cigar. If it had a little bit more oomph at the very beginning, we could be talking about a higher score, but still a memorable, I'm not complaining at all here. And in my opinion, this cigar is tailor-made for people who feel like Davidoff has lost their way. Hopefully Freud doesn't mind me talking about another company during their review. I hope you don't feel marginalized, just being honest. A couple years ago, Eladio Diaz, the man who made this cigar at his new factory, Eladio Diaz, the master blender of Davidoff for 30 plus years, left Davidoff. A lot of people feel since then, Davidoff has kind of lost their way a little bit. But if you're looking for that old Eladio magic, it is alive and well in cigars just like this one. Now regarding the price of these cigars, like I said before, Freud was kind enough to send me in an entire box of these. Once again, Freud, thank you. But for me personally, this is a $420 box of cigars at a box of 10, since these are $42 a piece. That's just a little bit too rich for my blood for an entire box. For me personally, I'd probably buy two of these. One for review and then one to enjoy my own time. If you have that kind of expendable income to buy an entire box, more power to you. This is a luxury price cigar that smokes like a luxury price cigar because the flavors are freaking luxurious. Once again, Freud, thank you for sending an entire box. I'm glad I have more of these. And one last thing, do not forget to follow me on Rumble and Odyssey with the way YouTube has been restricting and censoring cigar content lately. It is paramount that you know I am on other platforms like Rumble and Odyssey, just in case if YouTube pulls the plug at us here, if you watch this on YouTube. And it is currently 11.07 p.m. You definitely get your money's worth time-wise with this one as well. So yeah, everybody, this has been my review of the Freud Cigar Company's limited edition Sigmund Chapter 1, The Disruptor. 
a name that's just as long as this damn cigar here. But thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you for the next view.